Most bass players will probably have had their first meaningful contact with harmonics in Dittesdorf's famous concerto. The fanfares from the second concerto. Also, Draganetti, the concerto attributed to Draganetti, which has wonderful passages of harmonics. And then, of course, Bottasini. Everybody knows all the famous harmonic passages, you know, sonamb Sonambula, for example. Again. But I'd like to introduce you to a composer that you might not have encountered. And if you have encountered that composer, you might only know one of his pieces. Now, that composer was Franz Josef Kuyper, K-E-Y-P-E-R. He was a Danish classical era composer, and he lived from 1756 to 1815. And most of his music is in the Royal Danish Library. He was a virtuoso bass player and also a composer. And he composed not a lot of music, but quite significantly for the double bass. He wrote seven concertos, a rondo solo for double bass with cello, or cello and double bass, and then this Andante, uh, or Romance and Rondo, this Romance on Rondo that was published in 1974 by York Edition. The third concerto and the sixth concerto in C major, and all the rest are in G. Now you will, for those of you who know the Romance and Rondo, I have to tell you that it comes from two different pieces. The Romance is the second movement of the first concerto, and the Rondo is the final movement of the second concerto. Now this is the Rondo theme. And it's a beautiful rondo, uh, extended rondo. Also, what you need to know is that the final movement of the fifth concerto is, again, based upon the tune that you will know from the rondo solo for cello and double bass. And it is this one. So there's Kuiper, Danish composer who exploits the instrument quite well. And the thing that you also have to know about Kuiper is that, unlike all the virtues in the classical period, he did not employ Viennese tuning. He played on a double bass tuned in fourths. And that's quite exceptional for the time. But the passage work fits the instrument so well, and he exploits the, harm the harmonics in an incredible way. So, the rondo of the con uh, from the Romance and Rondo is from the concerto number two, and the rondo uh, solo for cello and double bass is the final movement of concerto number five. So I want to talk to you about harmonics, how to play harmonics successfully. Everybody loves harmonics, and I was no exception. As a young person, when I first discovered this beautiful sound, I think a critic called it like a thousand nighting, cage nightingales when Botticini used harmonics. But there's a particular way to make it work. The first, there are basic ingredients in playing harmonics successfully. The very first is the accurate placement of the finger of the left hand. So, to make sure that you're right in the middle of every note. And the second point is that the contact with the string has to be absolutely firm. And you can only ever successfully use one finger at a time. So the first thing is correct placement of the fingers. The second is good contact, and one finger at a time only. And then the other ingredients pertain to the right hand. Bow placement is very important, introducing clean harmonic sounds. And the usual contact point would be at least the mezzo forte contact point, and most likely forte. So, at least a forte contact point.
And then, of course, the other ingredients in the use of the bow, a question of contact point, uh, which we talked about, and then there's the question of weight and speed, and the correct combinations of those. And then, of course, there's the question of bow distribution, and also the question of the kind of bow stroke that one uses. So, in essence, for Each harmonic you play has to be almost as if it were the only note you were playing, with enough resonance to sing forever. And the kind of stroke that you would most likely employ would be a kind of detaché stroke or even a martelly one. And then, of course, the final ingredient in successfully playing harmonics is the perfect coordination between left and right hand. There's not much use in having wonderful bow stroke, good placement, fantastic weight and fantastic speed, but not synchronized beautifully. So, synchronizing the hands perfectly is the final ingredient. So just to recap, the successful performance of harmonics requires fundamental points. The first being the accurate placement of the left hand. The second is firm contact with the string, but with only one finger at a time. Then the next pertains to the right hand, the bow placement. Where on the string is the most successful place to produce clean sound for harmonics? And my suggestion is that the mezzoforte contact point, at the very least, is the place where you should start but most often in the forte contact point. And then it's a question of what kind of bow stroke, and it's usually going to be a kind of detaché or a martle stroke, which allows enough resonance. And then it's a question of a perfect balance between the weight that you use and also the speed of the bow. And the final ingredient is the coordination between the two hands. So there you have it how to play harmonics successfully. And once you've got through that, then every Kuiper concerto becomes accessible. So this is the rondo from the fifth concerto. And the second concerto rondo is this one.